Maybe tempted to play the safety, but maybe not that much confidence in his safety play. Took on a red, but as you say, I don't think he wanted to play. Yeah, it's, it, it was a tough situation. He's, he's gone 4-3 up. He probably wanted to have a, a comfortable shot to play. Didn't want to be put under pressure so early. He says it's so important to get that cue ball as tight to that ball cushion as possible. You say he had a safety shot off, the, off that pyramid, but it was had to be really exact. And this was an all-or-nothing shot. And when he missed it thin, obviously the cue ball's running away from him. Yeah, and it just shows you, doesn't it, the fine lines between success and failure. And that was the only shot Thank he had you. in that frame. Take your seats. Frame nine. Robert Milken is to break. Well, we started off best of 11. And now it's the best of three. There were certainly signs in that frame that Neil Robertson was beginning to find his touch, but I always say that the nearer you get to the end of a match, the more an odd run of the ball, an unforced error can turn it all around. This match for me is still very much on. I know at the start, Neil Robertson had been a very warm favourite. <coughs> but it's not looking that simple now. This could be good if it bounces and gets behind the green. Well, not quite, but still a good safety. Mm. Did I sense a little bit of frustration there? Didn't have to play the pot, but probably thought, well, playing the pot, I could get the cue ball back to the balk end, but didn't hit the red anywhere near full enough. Easy enough red, but needs a good shot to get position on a colour. Possibility, I don't know if there's a gap here. If you could play this little gap. He's just having a look now. And if he cannon into that second red full at the right pace, he would just about be on the black. Well, didn't fancy it, so ran through and he'll be happy with that. One. He's on the pink. Played it nicely. Didn't want to risk playing the cannon, but so if he ran through and didn't, as long as he didn't catch the second ball full in the face, the white would keep running, which it has done. Yeah, it just came a little bit too straight. Forced the angle. Has he forced it enough? Can he cut this red in? Seven. It looks mighty fine. Didn't think it was worth the risk. Robert, Robert Milkins, seven.
Well, terrific yeah. pot. And look where the cue ball finished. He thought he'd play it in such a way that it'd be on the brown and he wouldn't leave anything but the red he was playing as long as he got close to the pot. And that's exactly what happened. Good thinking, good shot. Well, oh dear me, the rest is uh, letting him down this evening. <coughs> Didn't see that one coming, but immediately it went to the top cushion. You knew it wasn't going to drop. Oh, well, Robert. They are missable, those. But it was one that he couldn't afford to miss. Where's the pink ball going? It's OK. One. He decided to go into the reds off the, the red. Hit them solid enough. Always knew, of course, he'd be on the brown with it being over the, the pocket as it is. So where's another chance? Well, he won't miss this one with the rest. Five. Six. Yes, yeah, nicely, Judge Cannon. Back only available at the moment into the right corner pocket. So you need nice, tight. Close control of the cue ball in these situations. Thirteen. Fourteen. Obviously feels he can get to this red now, to the left corner. 21. I don't think he'll be holding for the black. We have to go up for the blue. Well, he could hold for the black. 22. And that'll do nicely because the least amount of distance that cue ball has to travel, the better. Mm. A little bit straighter on this red, it appears. You can see the little grimace. Yeah, he wanted a, a slight angle. Can he force it round of two cushions? You don't want to pinch too much of the pocket and miss the red. And if he can't run it round of two cushions, it's come a little bit awkward now, amazingly enough. No, he couldn't. 30. So this isn't perfect. He'll, in potting the black or playing the pot, he'll run into the red just above the black. 
So you've got one eye on position, but don't take your eye off the pot. But played it nicely and controlled the cannon superbly. Back in good shape. Forty-five. Forty-six. <clears throat> Just looking at the moment, Stephen, there's always a more likely player to win the frame in one visit. Yeah, and as the match gets closer to the end, he seems to be looking more focused. Fifty-three. Fifty-four. Playing at a better pace. Fifty-nine. Red and a pink could do. Put him sixty points in front, which is fifty-nine remaining. 60. Pots the blue, gets 59 points in front with 59 left, but he's obviously pretty certain he'll get the, the red after the blue here. So go within one frame of victory. There you see it, 59 ahead, 59 remaining, but not for long. 65. Just this red required. 66. Taking these well, went out of position slightly a couple of times, but played nice recovery shots. Seventy-three. Seventy-four. Well, a few times this evening we've been talk, talking up the 81. century break. We've not seen one yet. Eighty-two. As I said earlier, he's made 32 centuries this season. 393 in total. 89. 90. We should see one, but he needs the yellow and the green. Does the green pass the pink? 97. Obviously does. 99. 99. Well played. Well played. When you get to the nitty gritty of a match, it's a good performance. OK. 106. He missed another shot in this frame with the rest when he missed the brown and gave Robert Milkins a chance. Robert couldn't take advantage of it. He got a second opportunity and he's made the most of this one. Deep screw. Well, he's not bothered about the black. It was set for 117, which worked him one frame away from victory. Robert Milkins had half a chance there. But he didn't take it, and Neil Robertson now leads five frames to four.